the Moai, and you have all kinds of incredible mysteries there. Notice the Moai with the hands in the navel. Just as a side note, you get something very similar at Gebekli Tepe, I think. But these are some of the petroglyphs. Notice the hands. We were just hearing about the hand shape. And you have comparisons. These are just some comparisons between Easter and Petra uh, and Gebekli Tepe. But what you have on Easter Island, which is really very strange and mysterious, is this so-called indigenous, what's an indigenous script, indigenous something. This is a modern reconstruction on a monument outside the governor's office, but the Rongo Rongo script. Have people heard about that? It's on wooden tablets, only if, about two dozen, 26 or so people argue about the authenticity of some of them, are known at this point. They're inscribed on these wooden tablets, and these have never been to this moment, unless we're right about it, really been properly interpreted or deciphered. So we're looking at these. We've come back from Easter Island. It was sort of like a little break to, from thinking about other things. We're looking at it, but I can't get my mind off of, you know, why do civilizations disappear? Why did the Ice Age end? We watch Symbols of an Alien Sky, and Katie says to me, well, you know, those Rongo Rongo characters, they sort of look like the plasma petroglyphs. And we're starting to look at them and look at them, and I've got to say, I tend to be skeptical about things at first. And I say, well, you know, I didn't even want to watch it again. I mean, no, no insult to you. <laughs> but I mean, I'd seen a, Symbols of an Alien Sky before. I found it really interesting. But she insisted, oh, we should watch it again. Good to relax the brain. And here we're looking at this. And these are Rongo Rongo glyphs. See them there? This is a, one other one here, another one here. And I believe, we believe that as you start looking at this, you get the same imagery. You get the same forms very consistently. I've got to say that, you know, it's just been crazy. The diverse interpretations, the very varying disparate trying to interpret Rongo Rongo. If you look at the literature about it, which I've read all of the literature I can get my hands on, I'm not finding any, any of it convincing, but it does make sense to me that these glyphs record or were inspired by these plasma configurations. And Oh, I just throw this, uh, well, not throw it in, this is another thing. Uh, it has been suggested by uh, Tony Pratt and his group that Nazca, the Nazca lines may record. Well, he didn't really get into the glyphs, the huge glyphs on the surface that you have there, but you start looking at these, we're looking at Rongo Rongo, there's a petroglyph of the Easter Island with the hand symbol, and I, well, you have that Nazca too. I'm wondering, does this all start to tie together? Again, as a unifying thing. You look at other aspects of this, and I realize what time it is, so I'm paying attention to time, but you look at other aspects of this, for instance, some of the legends, and I can't go into this great detail, but Easter Island, there's a legend. I want to read this. In the days of Roko Roko Hitao, the sky fell. What are they referring to by the sky falling? It fell from above onto the earth. The people cried out, the sky is falling in the days of King Roko Roko Hitao. He took hold. He waited a given time. The sky returned. It went away and it stayed up there again. So could this be referring to plasma changes in the sky? So we suggest, Katie and I, that maybe the Rongo Rongo tablets are recording some kind of, if it's solar plasma outbursts, or maybe in the context here, other type of plasma configurations, cataclysms, geomagnetic storms, could it be recording this? In fact, when you look at the glyphs, they seem to, in many cases, morph from one form to another, as if they're recording like a film, different configurations in the sky. Uh, we suggest that maybe it's what we could call scientific text, or you know, at least the original ones. Like anything, some of this could have been lost later, it could have been reused, it could have been tried to turn into some type of language later, but I'm suggesting for the origin of these glyphs. Could it be that they're recording some kind of plasma events? 
uh, whether it's a solar ejection, something like the Carrington event, or something much more dramatic. And could this be the end of the last ice age? Could a plasma event like that be what caused the end of the last ice age? It would come down, it would hit, it would incinerate the surface of the earth, it would leave only large stone structures, which is what you have surviving. It's now been documented very recently within the last couple of years that so many Neolithic structures from around the end of the last ice age, they are associated with underground tunnels and caves, artificial caves. Why would you dig those? Why would you dig into, the, or not dig, carve into rock, take, spend tremendous amount of times and, time and energy to do that? Well, if you're trying to survive a cataclysm from above, literally fire coming down, it would create deluges, um, huge floods, biblical floods, evaporating water, evaporating ice, it would have to precipitate out again, your rise, your causing ice sheets to melt, sea levels are rising, earthquakes, volcanic activity increased. You find around the world, and I just mentioned this a couple of examples, for instance, Easter Island, these low, thick stone houses. They're almost like fallout shelters or protective shelters. Also, even on Easter Island, they used the artificial caves heavily. Give you just an example. You have things like Mesa Verde. I don't know, were they just under cliffs for the fun or was that? In some cases, I'm not saying all of this would go back that far, but is it a collective memory? Is it a memory that you have to protect yourself for what may come in the future? Back to Gebekli Tepe. Were they seeking to protect themselves? Was this plasma coming down? Was it literally burning, incinerating? Did they want to protect this structure? I throw it out there. And could this be the cause of the great rains, ultimately that eroded the Sphinx? Could it push this all back? The geology does not deny that it could be that old. It's compatible. And again, Perot and his group have questioned the date. Well, as I said, here I'm suggesting that maybe at least one of these major events, because there may have been more than one, could have been at 9700 BCE by conventional dating. I realize not everyone accepts the conventional dating here, and that this could have wiped everything out. And I've got two more slides, because I know I'm running out of time. Uh, could it happen again? This is something that people ask me. This was published in uh, Astronomy and Astrophysics. Similar things have been published in Nature, for instance. So again, this is good conventional peer review. Uh, in this case, we're looking at a reconstruction of solar activity. This is the end of the last ice age. You Notice know, so incredible mood swings, if you would, of the sun and uh, very high solar activity and it sort of declines. This is a end of the last ice age, 7,000 or so BCE, declines, we have low. Notice that we're ramping up again. In the last century or less, there's a lot of indication things are happening, things are getting active again. So I would say be prepared, although I'm not, you know, I don't want to be overly dramatic, but who knows? If something hits tomorrow, you heard it here, right? <laughs>